All right, so this is the Kinovo Yunzi IF98, and it is a 98% keyboard that comes in at around $120 on Amazon. Now, there is another version of it that's going to be Bluetooth. This one is wired only, and the Bluetooth one is only available through their own website. I'll make sure to link both down below, but today we're gonna to be talking about the wired one, which comes in, like I said, at 120 through Amazon. So you do get it through a more, I guess, reliable place if you ever wanna return it or you don't like the way it feels. And the model I have here with me is the white one with the custom linear switches is what they call them, which honestly are just sort of like the gator on white switches they're very light they're linear and they're really fast to type on so i do recommend you go with this one if you're looking for one that's light in case you're using it for gaming or you just like the feel of lighter switches over something that's more tactile or has a giant uh not a giant but a larger force to press down this keyboard is also hot swappable so if you don't like the switches that you get you can change them out for something that you like yourself and like always they offer just a basic gator on brown red and blues so if you don't want any of those you can always switch it to one that you like they do take three and five pin switches so you really can use anything that you want now i want to talk about a few key points about this keyboard starting off with the design of this keyboard this is called a white but it's honestly kind of like an off white it's not true white kind of like you would expect from some keycaps this is more of a yellow or a warmer white and same thing with the blacks that are on here it's more of a graphite gray rather than a true black now the color choice is subjective and i honestly don't really like it i prefer more of a clean white a cool white so i don't really like this but it does also come with a brass plate on the back that i actually do like and it has their huge branding as you can see here it's from kinobo along with a brass badge on the back that has their slogan one click to infinity and i honestly really like these accents on the back because i think they make the keyboard look more premium and it also adds a little bit of weight to the bottom now speaking of adding weight this keyboard is made of plastic so it doesn't really have much weight to it compared to something like a keychron q5 so it's all made of plastic, it's relatively light, and it also sounds really hollow. In fact, I can go ahead and show you right now how kind of like what the sound is like from the inside if you tap it on the back. So as you guys can tell, it does sound a little bit rattly, and that's because on the inside I've opened it up and there's nothing underneath. There's no silicone, there's no foam, there's nothing really on the bottom of the case. And because it's plastic, whenever you tap it, you do hear both the top and bottom case kind of clash with one another. Now, even though it is hollow inside, I actually really like the keycap design. They're very high quality. They're actually comparable to some of the ones from PBT fans. I have the white on black. And as you guys can tell, these keycaps look really similar. And they do have that double shot PBT where the double shot or the other color from underneath does go all the way out to the edges. Unlike some of the key crown ones or some other keycaps where they just put just on the top, just barely enough to cover the lettering on the other side of the keycap. And speaking of keycaps, this keyboard does have shine through LEDs. So if you are someone that likes to use shine through keycaps where you can see all of the key legends nice and bright, this is going to be a great keyboard for that because the LEDs are on the north part or are really on the top part of the switch, meaning that whenever you put a keycap on there, the legends are going to look a lot brighter. Something like you see on the MX mechanical keyboards or really any other keyboard that's made that's not mechanical where you can see all of the legends in the dark. Now this keyboard is a 98% keyboard. And like I said, from the design, they also included a wave badge that's on the upper right corner if you're having it facing towards you. And this badge actually is interchangeable. So you can take it right out and that reveals another four switch slots in case you want to add another four, four buttons or four keys instead of having this wave badge up there. Now the wave badge is just a piece of silicone that's kind of friction mounted. It just goes right into the spot. So you can go ahead and pick it right out. I use a flathead screwdriver. You can probably use your nails as well 
to take out the wave batch to reveal the four switches on the bottom. And that brings me to the next part of the review, which is the features of this keyboard. Those four switches are hot swappable sockets. So like I mentioned earlier, you can't put whatever switches you want. And luckily, Kinobo has included four extra switches. Actually, I think it's more than four, but they've included some extra switches that you can go ahead and place into all of these sockets so that you can go ahead and use them as extra keys rather than having that wave badge up there. Now, along with the switches, they also included four extra keycaps so you can have a matching set and they can match the rest of the keyboard. And along with those four extra keycaps, there's also a little bit more extra ones in case you want to switch all of the legends. They're not, what are they called? They're not called the hotkeys, but the bottom command and option key, it does come with a set of those in case you want to switch the left one. Unfortunately, there's only the left side for the command and the option. They didn't include the ones for the right, but really most of us use the left side anyways, so I don't really see a problem with this. Now, even though it does include all of the Mac keycaps and it does say that it's Mac compatible, unfortunately, not all of the features are really compatible here for Mac OS, especially the software. So if you're looking for a custom keyboard that you were hoping that you can download the software, change the keycap, set up some macros, really set up some remaps on all of the keys. Unfortunately, that software isn't available for Mac OS. I went and I checked on their site and it's only available for Windows. But luckily, it does still have all of the other features on it. You can switch the keycaps. You can change out all the switches. It's hot swappable, three and five pin connections. And whenever you want to do anything to the inside, such as a tape mod or some pour on foam or anything like that, it's really easy to remove. This is gasket mounted. So really all of the screws that are on there, there's six, I believe, six or eight on the back that you can just take out. And then the whole piece just comes right apart. And the gasket mounts on this honestly aren't that great. If you see the keyboard really has no flex, especially if you're used to using a higher quality keyboard where the, all of the keys can really flex a lot. And that has to do because of all of the gaskets that are actually on this keyboard are all silicone. And because of that, they're really dense silicone pieces that when you press down, they really can't squish or really can't, what is that, compress anymore because it's such a dense, compact silicone piece that really the gaskets are nice, but they really don't add much value because there's no flex to the keyboard itself. But like I mentioned, luckily you can switch that out. All you have to do is take off all the six to eight screws and then go on the inside and switch out all of those silicone pieces. You can even add some foam of your own into all of the gaskets and that'll help out a little bit. The gaskets do sit on top of this grid like structure. So maybe some typical gaskets of using just some light foam might not work as well. You might have to look into filling up those holes first with something like silicone just to make it an even ground so that whenever you add a lighter foam, it can sit on a flat surface rather than this honeycomb looking like thing. And the last part of the overview is whether this is beginner friendly. If you're someone that's looking to get into mechanical keyboards, is this going to be a keyboard for you? Honestly, I don't see why you wouldn't really like this keyboard. It's really great. You can go ahead and change up a lot of things. It's mod friendly. Like I mentioned, you can just take off those screws and really play around with the inside of it. It's relatively cheap, so it's not going to be super expensive to get into the hobby. It's hot swappable, so you can really mess around with it. Honestly, I think it's a good beginner keyboard if you are on Windows. If you're on Mac, I don't think this is a keyboard that's beginner friendly for you. Just because like I mentioned, like all of the software, all of the remapping, all of the macros, that doesn't really work on Mac. If you're on Mac and you're looking for a beginner friendly keyboard, I would recommend going with the Keychron V series keyboards. All of those use VIA or QMK, which are third party kind of open source software that you can use and it works perfectly on Mac OS. Those are also relatively around the same price. I believe the V5 is actually 15 or $20 cheaper on Amazon than this one. I'll also link that one down below. And that one, same thing. It's hot swappable. You can change out the keycaps. It has some um, things inside, not things inside, but you can get on the inside relatively easily. The only difference is that it's not gasket mounted. It is plate mounted, but it still sounds just fine. And then the other thing is also the LEDs are south facing which means that if you do like using shine through keycaps, those won't, won't work that great. They still work really well, but they won't work as great as something with north facing, just because usually all of the key legends on shine through keycaps are going to be on the upper middle or upper left side, meaning that an LED that's on the upper side of the switch is going to work a lot better. Overall, I don't think this is a bad beginner keyboard at all, or really a keyboard for anyone to add to your collection. 
like I said, it's very mod friendly. So if you like really tinkering around with all of the extra things, adding pour on silicone, really messing around with the keyboard, but you're, you can go ahead and do this on this keyboard without really spending too much money because you definitely don't want to mess up a keyboard that's more expensive. This is especially a great keyboard if you're on Windows just because of that software that you can download and then add all of the macros or any remappings that you would like to do. But overall, I think this is a good keyboard. There is other options. They have transparent green and transparent blue, I believe. Um, I'm not a fan of the transparent colors, but those options are out there. Like I said, there's also other switch options that you can go ahead and use. I personally won't be really keeping this keyboard. Just like I mentioned, it doesn't really work on Mac OS. I use a lot of remappings, a lot of macros, so I can't really use this keyboard. I'm going to stick to my Keychron one for now and continue to search for another 98% keyboard because I really like having that number pad, especially for my day job. But what about you? Is this a keyboard that you're looking for? Is this really something that you want or that you can use in your daily setup? Let me know down in the comments and to all of you that are waiting for a sound test. Here is a sound test of what the custom linear whites, or I think just custom linear switches on the white Kinovo IF98 sound like. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you on the next one.